life a lot easier. So we're going to go next. We'll hit up the 676. Choose your device and from a whole slew of them. But we'll choose the 676. Click next. Now is where you're going to choose your compiler. For the CCSC compiler, you will have to download a plugin for the MPLAB IDE, which is no problem. It's in the download section on CCS's website. Download that, install it, and then it basically, when you click on the drop down, it'll, it'll pop up in here along with some other uh, compilers and assemblers and things that come with the IDE. You'll see the CCSC. So we want to use that one. Now we'll go ahead and create our project. We'll take and name it. Uh, Blink project <coughs> and click next. Now here's where you want to add any type of external files that you may have. Um, for the CCSC, you want to go to your program files. For your header file, you definitely want to header. Uh, the CCSC provides you with header files that has all the all the things that make your life a lot easier, uh, predetermined names and register settings and all that stuff. Um, so it's in the program files. Pick C devices and then you just got to find your device so we want the, uh, the 676 there he is and then we're gonna add that over to our project next everything looks good finish and there's our project now we're gonna create a new blank piece of paper to, to write some code on and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna title this uh, I don't know, blink project and also in these tutorials, I'm going to assume that you have C programming language experience. So um, such as you know, such as ints and for loops, do loops, uh, if then statements, switch statements, classes, all those different things. Will uh, I'll, I'll expect you already have a little bit of experience with. So I won't spend too much time on uh, talking about that. So now we're going to go ahead and save this uh, source file. And we'll just name it the blink source dot that. Now, the main thing is, is it's not in the system yet. You want, you have to add it to your project. So you come over here to your source files, right click, choose add files, and add your source to your project. Otherwise the compiler won't know where to find your source file. So now we can save the whole project. Now we're ready to begin coding. So now we're going to definitely make sure you do your include. Get your header file in there. 676.h. Get that in there. Now is where you want to set your fuses. Now your fuses, what those are, is if you come over to your data sheet here, go on down to special features of the CPU, you know, see that there are a lot of configuration bits you can use in the configuration register. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of those are your mem clear, like I talked about before, the pin function mem clear, and then functions default IO internally sets to VDD, so that way it saves you that resistor. You can set that one. Set watchdog timers. You can set, you know, different oscillator functions, many different things. And basically, CCSC has kind of helped you out there in, in your header file. If you open up your header file, we'll maximize this so you can see it. They give you pretty much all of the fuse directives, or basically configuration bit directives that the compiler understands in pretty simple, just one word explanations of them all. And um, that way you can you know what you're what you're working with and what the different commands will be. So that's where you'll find that. For us, we are just going to use just some simple stuff. We've got our mem clear resistor in, so we want to do mclr for our memclear when enable that so that way it lets us know that we're using external memclear we also want to do no protect uh, what protection is is it's basically code protection uh, what it'll do is basically so if somebody malicious tries to plug your chip out of the circuit and read the code off of it and get your code it will actually if you choose if you type protect instead of no protect it will encrypt your code. That way when they try to read it off the chip it comes out garbled and they can't uh, you know reverse engineer it so to speak. <coughs> so we'll just choose no protect because in our case we don't really care. Um, I don't think anybody's going to want to steal the blink code off of this. So now we also have no watchdog timer. We don't want any watchdog timers going on. Uh, what watchdog timers are, um, just for a brief overview of them, is uh, a lot of times in different embedded systems you'll be using batteries with them and you want to be able to put the chip to sleep so it uses uh, the, low the low power consumption and different uh, microchip picks use uh, nanowatt technology where they'll just pull just barely even anything when they're asleep 
and you can have a watch, you can set up a watchdog timer if you want to time out and wake the chip back up uh, if after so long being asleep if you want to, which for this tutorial we're not wanting to do anything like that, so we'll just turn that off by choosing no watchdog timer. And once we've got the fuses set, now we're going to need to set the clock. So we're going to use the use command delay, and we want to use the internal oscillator. So we want to use internal equals 4 M and 4M is for megahertz. Um, I think that's the max for this chip. Uh, it's all there in the data sheet if you want to check. I believe it is. It's the max for this chip. And well, once we've got the clock set up, we're good. Um, the reason we're using the delay, you don't have to, but we're using delay because we're going to be um, delaying for so many seconds so we, can get, so we can actually cause the LED to blink. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. So go ahead and get into our main function. And inside our main function, what we're going to do is we're going to, you have to set your tri-state registers, which the tri-state registers is basically your ports, set up your pins. Which pins do you want them to be output, which pins do you want to be input, basically. So, zero is for output, one is for input, it's a binary value, or you can use hexadecimal if you if you want to, it's, it's whichever it accepts either number. But the command is going to be set tris for tri-state, and then we're using port C, so you want C. And I'm going to go ahead and use binary just so you can see it all spelled out. Um, there's going to be six ports. So there's six digits. Four, five, six. So there we go. So there's six digits. We're going to set them all to output uh, just because of the fact that we're just blinking an LED, so we're not reading anything in. So nothing needs to be a one. But basically, it goes from right to left. Uh, like pretty much anything in binary, you've got basically port zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So there's all six ports. And so if you wanted port you know, two to be an input, you'll just change this one to a one, basically, uh, to for it to be an input. But right now we want them all to be output ports. So now we're going to go ahead and blink our LED. So we're going to output a high on our pin C0. And then now is where we use the delay function that I was talking about earlier. Delay MS, the, this stands for microseconds. Um, you can also do US for uh, or I mean, sorry, this is microseconds, the other is milliseconds, apologize. But MS for milliseconds, US for microseconds. Um, for us, we're going to use milliseconds just because microseconds you can't see with your eye. So we're going to do 500, so half a second. And we'll get some output low on pin C0. And basically, the output high will, you know, turn it on. Output low turns it off. So after half a second, we'll shut it off. That's the end of our main function. Now, just so this doesn't blink once, if we want it to blink over and over and over, we'll just put it into an infinite loop. Um, you can use while true or use this for statement that I'm typing in now for your for your infinite loop. That way, it'll blink infinitely and close that in. Okay, that's basically all there is to it. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now we just compile it, come up here to build all, compile that, get zero errors, zero warnings. Now you are ready to place this on the chip. Um, in subsequent tutorials I will show you how to place that on there. Uh, the compiler will create a hex file, a dot hex file that is the actual program file. Over here we'll take a look at it in our lesson, so you get a lot of different things. There's a lot of helpful files that it, it puts out too. Um, your, tree, your tree files, all that stuff. I'll explain those later in tutorials, but the main one you want is you want your hex file. Which, let's see where we're at here. Looks like for some reason I'm not seeing it. Let's build it again real quick. Get our hex file in here. This may be it. Oh, of course it's going to ask me what to open it with. There we go. Yeah, that's the that's hex file. Yeah, I have another program on here that recognizes those as a different deal. But here's your hex file, basically. It's done in the Intel hex uh, format. Is what it's done in. Um, so um, you can look that up later to see how this is all formatted. But this is basically your program uh, 
convert it into a hex hex file so that it can be stored on the uh, chip. So that's basically the file you'll need to use with a programmer. Um, I will be showing you guys later on how to how to do that, how to get it onto a programmer and into the chip. That's been pretty much the tutorial for creating the Blink project. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be posting sooner.